Today is going to be a very short lesson on the structure of the atmosphere. Basically what we're going to do is go over the layers of the atmosphere and why the atmosphere is split into those layers, and that's pretty much it. You should have your green packet for the structure of the atmosphere, and then also the handout that shows the side view of the layers of the atmosphere. It also is titled Structure of the Atmosphere. So make sure you have those two things. First thing is just to look at the first sentence on your green note sheet about the structure of the atmosphere. It says the atmosphere is divided into four layers based on temperature. Okay, so we have four layers of the atmosphere based on temperature. Go ahead and circle or underline or highlight temperature. Okay, that's why we have these four layers. And you see the four layers are going to be troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. The exosphere is usually considered part of the thermosphere. Okay, now go to the handout that has the side view of the layers of the atmosphere. And we're just going to look at that first and label it. And then we'll go back to the green sheet and fill in a few details about each of the layers. So the first layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere. So go ahead on that side view or that map of the atmosphere, label that first section troposphere. You see on your sheet that it goes from about zero um, sea level to about 11 kilometers high in the atmosphere. And you have a line like this. Yours says giant cumulonimbus clouds and Mount Everest there. And basically what that's showing you is that Mount Everest is still in the troposphere. Okay, it doesn't go into the stratosphere. Pretty much all the weather is also in the troposphere. There are a few clouds, like the giant cumulonimbus clouds, that can poke into the stratosphere. But most clouds are in the troposphere, and pretty much all the weather is in the troposphere. Lots of times when you see uh, some of those big anvil head clouds and lots of flat top clouds, that is um, at this boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere. They flatten off there. I do want you to label the boundary between the stratosphere and the troposphere. And you're going to label it the tropopause. Okay, so label this boundary here the tropopause. And that's just T-R-O-P-O, -O, tropo, and then pause. Just the boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere. Okay, then the second layer, the atmosphere, is the stratosphere. Goes from about 11 kilometers to about 48 kilometers. So about 11 kilometers to 48 kilometers. Label that stratosphere on your sheet. There is on your sheet also some, some vertical lines. Let me change my color. Some vertical lines kind of going like this Okay, on your sheet. We already learned what this is, something that occurs in the stratosphere, something very important to us. Okay, that's the ozone layer. So go ahead and label kind of those vertically dashed lines. Um, that's the ozone layer. Okay, ozone layer is in the stratosphere. The next layer, from about 50 to 80-ish um, kilometers, that's the mesosphere. Go ahead and label that mesosphere. And then the top layer of the atmosphere is the thermosphere. It goes from about 80 kilometers up to space. Now, you notice they did this little line, crooked line there. That just is to signify that they're skipping some numbers here. Because if they would keep on going with the same scale, it would be off the page, you know, all way up, way up above. So they broke some lines there. And you can do the same thing. If you want to kind of break your line or make it a little jagged line, because I want you to put this exosphere boundary. Okay, the boundary with space is the exosphere. And that's at 500 kilometers. So go ahead and put that on your sheet. Just, you know, your, your sheet only goes to 100 kilometers. Just put a little broken line like this, and then label 500 kilometers, put exosphere above it. Below it, you can write down ionosphere. Okay, so below it, write down ionosphere. So exosphere is up there, ionosphere is down here. So the, trope, the thermosphere is split into two layers, the ionosphere and then the exosphere. Now the last thing I want you to do before we go to our note sheet is I want you to put this red line on. 
Now, what does the red line signify? Well, think about that first sentence of your notes. The atmosphere is divided into four layers based on temperature. So this is the temperature line. So it starts at about, what, 25, 30 degrees Celsius. So that's where you're going to start your line on your sheet. So start your line there at the surface of the Earth at about 20 or 25. Then it's going to get cooler as you go up in altitude. It's going to go to about negative 50. So draw a line on your sheet from about 25 to negative 50, where it reaches the trouble pause. Then go kind of a little bit straight up and actually cause your temperature to increase. So increase to about 10 or so at the stratopause, which is the boundary between the mesosphere and stratosphere. Then once you're there, you're going to get cold again, down to maybe negative 100-ish, negative 95-ish at the mesopause, boundary between mesosphere and thermosphere. And then you're going to get hotter, and you're going to get way hot to, you know, they say on here, like 1,500 degrees. It doesn't really matter. Just get hotter. Okay, I'm not going to ask you specific temperatures. What I want is the trend. So you see, with altitude in the stratus pause, it gets colder. With altitude in the stratus pause, it gets warmer. With altitude in the mesosphere, it's colder. With altitude in the thermosphere, it gets warmer. And again, that's our four layers. Colder with altitude, warmer with altitude, colder with altitude, warmer with altitude. Four distinct layers. Now, any idea why does it get colder in the troposphere with altitude? Well, it's because as you get farther from the surface of the Earth, there's less heat. Okay, the sun is shining, and we have all that infrared radiation. It comes down, and it gets absorbed by the ground, and that ground radiates it back into the atmosphere, so it's going to be hotter at the surface and cooler as you get farther from the surface. Well, why does it get warmer in this in the stratosphere? It's because of the ozone. Remember, the, the ozone is absorbing the UV light, and when it does that, some heat is created. So it's going to get warmer because of ozone. Mesosphere just gets colder. Okay, same kind of reason we're getting farther from the surface and they're farther from the ozone layer. There's nothing in here really to make it hotter. Then the thermosphere does get hotter again, and that's just because it's the first time any radiation from the sun is hitting anything. It's going through space, with the, which is a vacuum, and there's nothing there. It finally gets to the Earth, and all of a sudden there are air par particles, even though they're spread so far apart. Those air molecules do absorb some of the sunlight, and that makes it hotter. Okay, So that's, that's why it gets hotter in the thermosphere. Okay, Now, go to your green note sheet, and let's just fill this in real fast. The troposphere. You're going to say it is the lowest layer. Almost all the weather is in the troposphere. 75% of all the atmosphere's gases are in the troposphere. Again, it's a tiny layer. And the temperature decreases with altitude. That's it for troposphere. Tropopause, that's the boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere. The significance of that is, is it's usually the top of the weather, which I kind of talked about before, and also the jet streams happen here. Okay, the jet streams are here. And we'll talk about that later, basically really strong rivers of wind. It's hard to read there. Um, the jet streams are at the tropopause. Okay, going to the stratosphere. Stratosphere is the second layer. Temperature increases with altitude because the ozone absorbs UV light. Mesosphere, not much to say. Third layer gets colder with altitude. Thermosphere, the top layer. Temperature increases because solar energy is absorbed by the air molecule. Then ionosphere, that's an electrically charged ion layer. 
the lowest part of the thermosphere. Some significance of it, um, it reflects radio waves. So if you're listening to your radio station, it's probably because of the ionosphere. The radio stations broadcast their radio signals up. So they broadcast their radio signals up. So they'll bounce off the ionosphere and they'll come back down to your antenna so you can hear your radio station. Um, also, the auroras are in the ionosphere. The auroras you might know of as the northern lights and southern lights. And here are some pictures of those. Um, basically, kind of simple, simple thing what caused them. You get charged particles from the sun from solar flares, and they're flying through space. They get pulled in at the North Pole and the South Pole because of the magnetic field lines. That's where the magnetic field lines circle in. Uh, if you remember our plate tectonics unit, we talked about that. Um, and when those charged particles hit that ion layer, uh, the ionosphere, it makes the pretty colors. Um, so, pretty neat. Okay, the exosphere, that is the boundary with space. There are radiation layers here called the Van Allen radiation belts. That's where the solar wind kind of hits the Earth. And that's it. Okay, that was our quick little lesson on the layer or the structures of the atmosphere.